wow, that was an experience. Don't get me wrong, there's no spoiler warning here, but I guess I will give a warning for Extreme Glaze. Hide your kids and hide your wife. It's about to get messy in here because holy shit was this movie a ride. For a sequel to a movie that was not only critically acclaimed by the audience, but the critics as well, a rare feat nowadays in our divided Hollywood era, but a movie that by the definition itself and first-hand experience is an excellent film. To not only almost be a completely character-driven movie, touching on a broad-scale subject matter that can affect anyone and everyone at any given time, riddled with not only effective jump scares, but Mike Tyson combo punched with a suspenseful atmosphere of unknowingness that I can only describe as anxiety-inducing. But in my opinion, I think what was the most effective and therefore most impactful delivery that Smile 1 had to offer was the almost total immersion of the audience to protagonist POV. A directing style so commonly used that it truly shows when a visionary is behind the camera. And when it comes to the new up-and-coming visionary behind the camera, Parker Finn, mwah, we really have a great one here. Because for all of the glazing that I just gave Smile 1, his debut film all the way back in 2022, if you can believe it or not, Smile 2 really shows with this franchise, this idea, and his vision can really be when given Hollywood's support. Because Smile 2 is really more intense, thrilling, disturbing, emotional, scary, and the word that I would come up with the most if I really had to describe this experience in one word, unsettling in almost every single aspect when compared to the first. Combined with a bone-chilling performance by Naomi Scott, an actress that unfortunately has had her fair share of problems getting that next step of Hollywood fame after Disney's live-action Aladdin, but an actress that definitely received a personal standing ovation from me watching her journey all the way back from her lemonade mouth days. Please don't call my dad. He doesn't even want me alone with the boy. If he found out that I skipped class with one, he'd never let me out of the house. What the fuck is going on there? Yeah, that is a true deep cut. But as much of a character-driven movie that Smile One was with Rose and how depressing it was to watch her descent into absolute insanity, Smile Two doesn't upgrade in a sense without the performance of Naomi Scott as Sky Riley, a masterclass showing and most importantly, a relatable and realistic take on a famous and rich but lonely girl struggling to overcome some major and public mistakes from her past. And while I want to choose my words more wisely here as to not to say that the movie took its time, because some people would imply that it had a slow first act, which couldn't be more wrong in my opinion, but the movie really does an incredible job pacing-wise to really get you, the audience, to care about this character who isn't really that good of a person, and because you're spending the entire movie in her POV, as you watch the madness unfold around her as she sinks deeper and deeper into this trauma demon sunken place, I think that direction only adds to the immersion and desperation that we, the audience, see take place. There's really not enough glaze that I could give to this movie and Naomi Scott's performance personally, and maybe that's just because I'm a character-driven person, but this was truly a resume-topping performance that really checked the most important checkbox that I think has been missing in our current Hollywood slate of acting. Emoting, a talent that has become so devoid in our entertainment landscape that it has become relatively easy for even the casual eye to recognize it, hence the screaming girl in Alien Romulus and why that scene got so much attention and was marketed so heavily. A talent that I believe has fallen from the graces and the praises of words like inspirational and honorable to the likes of cringe or trying too hard. Disgusting, and it's a shame and incredibly stupid in my opinion. The level of emotions that Naomi Scott was able to display was mesmerizing, and man do I just love a good, effective snot bubble to really sell me the stakes and emotional turmoil this character is really going through. And God, does Naomi Scott pull it off in some of the most beautiful and effective ways possible. A true 10-year vet when it comes to the snot bubble game, and I haven't seen a snot bubble performance really drag you into the despair like Naomi Scott since Rick in The Walking Dead. I am counting. Please. Please. It, it, it can be Holy shit, what a scene. That's a double deep cut, by the way. But Naomi Scott is Smile too, And I want to give a shout out to the marketing because not only do I feel like it really supports my statements, but it was really a full send on her performance overall compared to even the franchise or name recognition. And because of that incredible marketing strategy in regards to Naomi Scott, but the online marketing as well, Smile 2 didn't really have to market any of the real scares that the movie was sewn together and littered with. And I mean littered with. 
And when compared to some of the most recent horror films that have to show you all of the most effective jump scares in order to just get some butts and seats, the good grace that the Smile franchise gained from an audience standpoint in the first movie really came around for the sequel and rewarded the audience to an experience of new and numerous scares that were not actively shown in the trailers, which made for a way more intense and fun viewing experience. A movie where you can genuinely walk away from with you and your mates, or even online here in the comments section, and all have different scares and scenes that affected you the most, with a scene jumping out into my mind right now while typing the script that had me tearing up in the theater like that homie from Get Out. A true bone-chilling first-time watch that not only brings something new to the tried and frankly worn out idea of the possession story, a story of classic protagonist gets possessed, starts seeing creepy things, learn what the creepy thing wants, unsatisfying and unemotional climax at the end. We have seen it before, but a movie that effectively mind fucks you, the audience, as you watch our characters pretty much get toyed with to the point of insanity and then have to face their inevitable doom. A shit situation to say the least, but I have been yapping and glazing for a good while now. Let's go ahead and talk about... Okay, so let's be real. If you know the plot for Smile 1, then you kind of know the plot for Smile 2. But say hypothetically you have a friend that couldn't handle watching both of these movies in one week, so you just force them to go with you and your mates to this movie, then Smile 2 is the story of a trauma bonding demon that torments his victim to the brink of insanity before taking over the person completely and making them unalive themselves in the most horrific way possible in front of someone in order to spread. And because of that, the cycle of trauma bonding just continues on and on and on until it takes a hold of Sky Riley, a pop star with a troubled past and on the path of her redemption tour. After a drug deal gone wrong in order to buy some pain pills for a back injury she received during a car accident, Sky's life and reality is turned upside down as she finds herself next in line for the trauma demon. In an industry where the horror genre has always been in a relatively high stakes, high reward kind of partnership with Hollywood, especially when compared to some of the more widespread, consumable, and financially impactful genres such as the high octane action thrillers or relaxing comedies. But through an incredible golden era of some horror icons, the inclusion of the style and immersion found footage brought to the table, and the rise of popularity in regards to the masses when it came to possession stories, some could argue that the relatively minor subgenre of horror has had some of the biggest impacts in our society in regards to pop culture and marketing. And while I am just a bloke, therefore I am not here and or qualified to give a horror history lesson, I laid down that foundation because the path to incredible, disturbing, scary, and thrilling horror movies that we all know and love is being paved right now in front of our very eyes. And while I'm definitely not saying that we're entering that golden era of the 80s again, with studios such as A24 anchoring the genre now for quite some time, studios like Neon entering the arena with some heavy hitters, and franchise surprises that have the chance of becoming mainstays and future staples of the genre, it's not hard to say that Smile 2 really helped solidify this franchise as one of those mentioned staples. If only It Follows was given this kind of treatment. Man, that's a third deep cut. So in a ranking tier list that is still a name in progress, Smile 2 is clearly cinema. But more surprisingly, a movie that could go down as one of the best movies of the year, at least for me personally, and in a filler arc year that honestly isn't as bad as it looked all the way back in January, it's just surprisingly. But that is a conversation for a different video. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.